And now we've come to the final phrase in the Lord's Prayer. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, why on earth would God lead us into temptation? But more to the point, why on earth do the translators translate it like that? Because it actually means testing. But whatever the Greek is, this is how the English is. And this is how we have prayed it ever since we stopped praying in Latin. And actually the English as it is can sometimes be a very useful and heartfelt prayer. Because there are times in our lives when we know we are about to face situations when we should do one thing, but we fear we will take the easy route out. I can vividly remember praying not to be led into a situation when I was fairly sure I wouldn't have the courage to do what I knew to be right. I cannot remember now the situation or the people involved. It was during my student days and I can only remember the intensity when I confessed the fear in church that if push comes to shove, I would do the wrong thing. And I remember praying in church, Lord, I don't have the courage to pray this morning that you will help me do the right thing in such and such a situation. So I'm going to pray that you will just not let me get into that situation in the first place. Please help me. Please help me. Do not lead me into temptation when the Lord's Prayer came up. And bless him, he did. God answered my prayer because prayer is about the real us. And every prayer, every phrase in this prayer is there for a purpose. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then the final phrase, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And we're right back at the beginning. Our Father who art in heaven and our eyes and the eyes of our hearts are lifted up back to the praise of God to the kingdom and the glory, not so that we may be too heavenly minded to be any earthly use, but so that our attention to the world may be suffused by our knowledge of the glory and the love and the grace of God. Yes, kingdom is such a human word. The kingdom and the power and the glory sounds like a human despot. They're human words, but all we have are human words. And the topping and the tailing of the Lord's Prayer with these human words, Our Father in heaven, and the acknowledgement of the eternal kingdom and the power and the glory of God actually offers us the promise of a place of peace and of rest and of solace. And at this time of lockdown, all of us, whatever our personal circumstances, we are all in need of rest and peace and solace. We of course need fun and joy and the mixing with other people. But in this loneliness, in this being cut off, even though it could be and is quiet, it's often not peace. And so as we pray this Lord's Prayer, this familiar prayer, as we lift our eyes to the heavens, let us ask that God's peace may suffuse our loneliness and turn our quietude into his solace, that our solitude may be suffused by the knowledge and the grace and the presence of his glory, that our enforced isolation may become a well of the solace of his grace as we catch glimpses of his kingdom that while it lies beyond us is here within us in our midst our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.